Hey guys, welcome to the second Paleo book review of the Paleo Literature series, where uh, we go over academia bringing to light the Earth's vast and mysterious fossil record, which I read and give a review on within a 5 star rating. Today in this video we will go over Mark Witten's uh, Pterosaurs, uh, Natural History, Evolution, and Anatomy. Uh, I had the chance to purchase it from Amazon for a little under $30 USD, and it was released in the year 2013 on June 23rd. Uh, Princeton University Press published this 304 page hardcover book. So let's launch off the ground like a Quetzalcoatlus and take this guys on this book review. So for the first time back in 2013, this was a pretty neat book to have and has continued to be one of the best resources for pterosaurs hands down since its release. Uh, it has held up pretty decently uh, over time, even when missing genera, uh, which I'll kind of nitpick and go through just to see uh, which genera are missing and what good qualities throughout the book we see uh, with the genera at least listed, stuff like that. Um, it falls, it definitely falls into a similar position, uh, not too different from Oceans of Kansas 2nd Edition by Mike Everhart, which I, uh, uh, I covered in a previous video, albeit it has held up pretty well to time considering its subject matter, which is uh, no small feat for uh, for someone writing about paleontology, considering that paleontology shifts a lot over time, uh, and our understanding of it, uh, well, is subject to change based on new findings and the whatnot. Pterosaurs, a natural history by legendary pterosaurologist Mark Witten shows a broad perspective for pterosaur evolution to the reader. Uh, and its many looks, diversity-wise, are amazing, uh, with attempts of paleoecology summaries attached, <laughs> which is pretty good. This overall, again, holds up somewhat today in the year, well, 2022. If I were to start somewhere with how much I enjoy this paleontological resource for these airborne reptiles, I really appreciate that extra effort into discussing what the remains mean for behaviors and certain traits. Uh, the visual aspects are amazing because, well, Mark Witten is a, is a great paleo artist. Um, Witten goes into massive detail. Uh, anatomically to describe to you what these flying reptiles were truly like and it is very well done the majority of the time uh, you'll have at least one takeaway guaranteed maybe even more uh, after each section of the text other awesome aspects about Mark Witten's pterosaurs is the way most of the models are positioned uh, outside of Witten's paleo or uh, diagram showing pterosaur uh, relationships, um, they the the pterosaur models will appear in almost every chapter in their respective grouping, uh, sort of representing their grouping in a launching position, uh, and this is very great. It's a it's a stance you don't always see in pterosaur literature, and really shows you how these animals can lift off the ground and take to the air all just by one position and not to mention also the detail when it comes to these models the detail again when it comes to his paleo art his his models his diagrams have you not they 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 really try hard to tell a narrative a story about these flying reptiles and really try to get down to, to the essence of what makes a pterosaur a pterosaur which I feel is a very important thing for a book to explain to you, especially of this caliber. Um, the book is very colorful. Uh, the format is surprisingly not bad at all. Even when it's blocky, it's not really that bad to read, as Witten will try his best to keep you engaged. Uh, the sort of style he uses to illustrate certain aspects does get across the point. The text can be very, very well done at times. Like, even when he's witty, 
uh, it still feels like he's trying to communicate some sort of idea to you concerning pterosaurs, which uh, which is neat. I love a author that can really uh, sort of play around with the text. That's just a nice little detail I love seeing in stuff like this, and, and media and paleo media like that. So, yeah. So moving away from the obscene amount of praise I've given this book already, uh, to kind of move more into what Wynn actually discusses, uh, Wynn discusses the history of pterosaur research briefly and how they might have evolved through time, uh, using some neat methods of illumination, uh, resulting in an idea to beat, or even just a simple scientific hypothesis showing a fundamental process of the uh, natural sciences. So that's always pretty pretty awesome to see. If it's not apparent by uh, by now, yeah, I really I really enjoy this book and what it has to offer knowledge wise. The anatomy was a good feature of the text to implement. Uh, talking all about pterosaurs, even if you don't really understand anatomy terms when concerning the skeleton or musculature, uh, you will pick up on subtle anatomical changes at least, or certain features unique to certain pterosaurs. Uh, it can be anywhere from how the anatomy makes them act in life to what traits will alternate almost, and that's always a very good thing to communicate to your reader, especially in a clear format like uh, what Witten really tries to shoot for. Witten also talks about the soft bits preserved in pterosaurs, which can be quite rare in the fossil record, and he really does get down to the meat of it all, bone in. There are a lot of good resources and pre-chapter material essentially for the reader before we even get into the many groupings of pterosaurs he discusses. Understand that he first and foremost justified most of, if not all, of the biology and character of what makes a pterosaur in this book and has practically done so with at least the majority of pterosauria groupings mentioned. He goes into even some neat details of lifestyles not everyone sees from pterosaurs like swimming or launching off of water, and even their private and or violent lives. Uh, this already is a lot for someone who has been so invested in this subject, making a lot of this type of uh, imagery valuable, and overall just making the resource that more timeless in a weird way. Finally, after building up your tool belt uh, Witten has handed you, uh, which I haven't even fully explained in this review, merely a taste of what is offered in this book, we jump into pterosaur diversity across the recorded fossil record. This is where the book uh, gets sort of funky when compared to some of our current understanding today in pterosaur research in academia, so heads up on that as we fly through these prior to my final score based on a 5 star rating system. Now, although there are neat visual diagrams in the beginning, uh, when he talks about the early pterosaurs section, overall very solid, he missed a dimorphodont pterosaur uh, known as Celestiventus from northeastern Utah, uh, representing the biggest confirmed Triassic pterosaur at this current time. However, this is a pterosaur getting described in 2018 versus a publication 2013, so it's understandable to see it missing from this book. Uh, moreover, these recent discoveries, understandably absent, become the case for the following Neuronathid section. The book missed out on mentioning 2021 Sinomacrops and 2022's Cascocada discoveries, which is, again, understandable. Uh, since Ray does an alright job at handling this section of the book, uh, really outlining some cool, like, ecology with the Neuronathids, which was pretty impressive to say the least. Again, uh, just a reminder, I'm kind of at this point just nitpicking what genera aren't here, uh, and I'm sort of uh, not about that sort of stuff, uh, just genera names and knowing them all and what they really represent, stuff like that I'm, I like. And um, to me at least though, you can still interpret a, a lot based on what Witten gives you in the opening sections to really understand, well, where does Pterosauria uh, begin in the fossil record? So moving on, uh, majority of the time, again, he's very spot on, like his explanation of the Campy Lognithoidids, which is a murky grouping that introduced to me a very cool creature known as 
uh, Severamus. Again, aside from minor inaccuracies which are inspected, uh, Witten really tries to stick to one path or idea per section following in the footsteps of other respected researchers such as David Unwin or Christopher Bennett which he mentions throughout the text of the book. He's really trying to maintain consistency in a situation where this pterosaur grouping isn't per se the most well defined. Uh, Witten always, again, goes for the most well-reasoned pterosaur relationships from the research available and in text will sometimes make aware of genera that may be problematic which I really appreciate. Uh, moving on, the summary of Ramporokonite uh, is a great follow-up, however, like other chapters, doesn't include recent genera. Uh, a large-bodied Ramporinkid known as Jerk was big for its time in the Middle Jurassic of Scotland, however, never made an appearance since it was discovered in 2022. I understand I'm, I'm nitpicking, but still, a lot has changed on the general level at the very least in some areas. Uh, relationships included to a certain extent, not just even new genera being discovered, again, which is understandable to say the least. I still really, really liked reading this section about such classic Ramparinka pterosaurs like Sordes along with their unique features in their anatomy. Uh, the paleoecology sections really make up for those holes, as Wynn does an excellent job still showing what every grouping is definitively majority of the time across the Mesozoic era. Uh, the Wukong Gopterid section was great, short and succinct, uh, the, and the Isosteodactylidae uh, section was more or less on the same level. Uh, and can I just say too, what an awesome grouping of pterosaurs, I kinda wish uh, people would have discussed them more in certain circles. Then uh, there is the Ornithochiridae section. Uh, which, like some groupings already mentioned, have a complicated history amongst research. Uh, Witten deals with this section actually very well, and goes as far to show how unique locomotion-wise their nithochirids are on land and sea, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, the Boropterid section is also brief yet is proficient in talking about the group, then there's a Tyrannodontia, which is handled very well. That section draws even parallels to the last book I reviewed, Oceans of Kansas by Mike Everhart, when discussing the legitimacy of Geosternbergia as unique. This is something that Witten uh, and even Everhart from the last book I reviewed uh, share. Uh, basically, uh, a very important argument here cited uh, is because uh, crests can be so variable in pterosauria, it shouldn't be the only defining trait or founding traits per se of a unique pterosaur genus. Uh, and I definitely trust Witten on that sort of stance since he is, after all, one of the more knowledgeable people amongst pterosaurs. Uh, again, this is something important to consider with Geosternbergia and also uh, Don Draco, because Don Draco might be in a very similar position in, in, uh, with Geosternbergia. So meaning, well, what does this all mean? It means basically that Geosternbergia and Don Draco are just more likely just to be Pteranodon. Uh, and that was a very interesting issue that was briefly mentioned in, in, in Mark Wynn's Pterosaurs that I thought was uh, very nice to see and to really clean up some, uh, some, some possible issues with uh, the science of pterosaurs. Moreover, the Satenochasmoidea section is very well done. Witten's visuals up to this point in the section uh, have been spot on, and since this section contains uh, such classics like Pterodostro of South America, or the famous European Pterodactylus, it was one of the longer sections. Now, the visuals will keep you going throughout this text, which is still done very well. Uh, however, it dragged a little when the text was more prevalent than the visuals. I feel that's sort of a nitpick though, because that's sort of a me thing as a reader. Uh, and so, I guess just keep that in mind. Uh, however, what, what, what really, really uh, something I liked was uh, it was one of the more in-depth sections concerning paleoecology uh, when it was discussed overall from Winton. He even goes over a pterosaur grouping that's actually enigmatic a little, uh, which had brief appearance in the book, known as Lonchodectidae, which was honestly very, very neat to learn about. And this was followed by a very good section, a great section on Tapejaridae, 
then he also went over the Chao Yango Paterade, which I thought was very nice. And then he gets to his favorites uh, of the book, which are the Thalasmodromids, uh, otherwise known as the Sea Runners. Uh, I thought the Thalasmodromids were very, very cool. I really thought they were some of the more uh, interesting forms. And then finally, we end on the uh, on the biggest of the bad, the biggest of the pterosaurs. Uh, the big bad as Darkids, uh, as Darkaday. Um, it's a little outdated now, uh, but it is. It still holds up. He still gives you a pretty good summary of what the uh, as Darkaday were like. And he. It, this was actually the book uh, that introduced me to Aramborgia Nia, which has since been one of my favorite as Darkids I've ever learned about so far. So, after, well, going through this book, what would then be my rating? 5 out of 5. <laughs> now, I know I mentioned there's a lot of issues, but, um, these issues are pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. For such a resource that's so broad, comprehensive, uh, structured very well, visually structured very well, same with the text, which can even be funny at times. Those are things I feel I don't really get sometimes in resources about paleontology, and, and pterosaurs nonetheless. So I really think Mark Witten has outdid himself in a book, in his book, Pterosaurs, which I think warrants the 5 out of 5 rating. Um, I feel it is still, to this day, a pretty damn good resource for Pterosauria in general. You can still learn a lot about uh, just so much from this book, and it's definitely something for people to have under their belt when learning about animals from the Mesozoic. So that's kind of my final verdict. Uh, thank you everyone for watching. If you really enjoyed this book review, if you f uh, feel free to just like, subscribe. Uh, more of these are, are going to slowly come out over time, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, as always, thanks for watching.